Hello everybody, I'm Miss Lisa, and welcome back to another episode of Art Tree Goes Almost Live. This is our second Drawing for Kids class today, and if you missed last week, we did the patterned peacock. You might want to check it out if you missed that episode. Today I'm going to show you how to do a drawing of apples, and it's not so much the apples that are important, but I want to show you how to draw things that are in front of other things and things that are behind. And we're going to use apples today because they're easy to draw. And I want you to go ahead and get three round objects to try this exercise with. They could be tennis balls, they could be walnuts in their shells, they could be marbles, or apples, oranges things that are round and that you might have around the house. And I'm going to show you how to make it look like some things are in front and some things are in back. And this is important because then we can start to draw things that look like this. This is just a sketch that I did where I, you can see that this one is the one that's in front of all the rest, but it does look like uh, we're looking at a number of apples. Some of them are right side up, some of them are upside down. The right side up ones you can see the stems, the upside down ones you see this part. But the idea is that by learning how to make some things look in front and some things look behind those things that are in front, you have a much greater uh, choice of ways that you can draw some of the same looking objects. So if I wanted to draw these three apples and I didn't know how to draw some of them in front and some of them in back, I might have to draw them in a line, for example, like this. And that is interesting, but perhaps not as interesting as mixing it up a bit and making it look something more like this. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at pencils because there's a number of different pencils that we can use. And there are numbers and letters on these pencils. And it's important to understand what um, you're looking at when you look at those numbers and letters. Things that have Vs on them are going to be dark. I think of V as being bold. And the higher the number, the darker it's going to be. So in this set of pencils, my Bs go from 2B to 6B. So this is going to be my darkest pencil. Let's just take a look at the 2B, which is like the pencils that you would use in school. It gives marks like this. whereas my 6B gives a mark like this. In general, it's much darker and easier to see. Now, the H's stand for hard lead, so the, the bigger the number, the harder the lead, and if, or the graphite. If the graphite is very hard, the color doesn't come off as easily. So a 7H, that's my biggest number of all of these pencils that have H's on them, the 7H is going to be harder than the H, and the 7H is not going to have a lot of graphite coming off the pencil when I rub it on the paper, so it's going to be a very light line. And you can see that you can hardly see it on this paper, which is not white. Whereas my H line, will look like this. So let me just get out those four pencils that I talked about here, my 7H, my H, my 2B, and my 6B. And let me demonstrate on the white paper what they look like. So this is my hardest pencil. You can see it leaves a very light line 
This is my H pencil, so it's not as hard as the 7H. This is my 2B pencil, which is like the pencils you would use at school. And my 6B pencil is going to look like this. Now when I draw, I love dark lines, so I tend to use a 4B or a 6B pencil when I draw, but it's very useful to know that these other pencils exist because you can do a lot of drawing with your hard graphite and then work up to the softer or the easier to see graphite as your drawing develops. So if I want to draw a bunch of circles that look like they're overlapping, I can start with the H pencil, sorry, the 7H pencil, and I can just draw circles right on top of each other. And then I can take a darker lead like my 2B. In fact, I'm going to do those again with the H so you can actually see on the camera what I'm doing. Because these hard leads are actually hard to see when I film. Okay, so I've got overlapping circles. Now if I take the darker and I go around this circle, it's going to look like it's in front of this circle if I take away the part where it overlaps. Okay, so if I draw one circle, one complete circle, and then I erase this part, it's going to look like this circle is in front of this circle. Now if I go over this part of the second circle, but I stop where it overlaps, now it looks like this circle is in front of this circle, and if I take this overlap away, now it looks like this circle is in front of this circle. Okay, so that's an easy way to make it look like this circle is in front of this circle, and this circle is in front of this circle. So I want you to try that on a piece of scrap paper. I want you to make three circles like this and overlap them slightly. And I want you to choose one of them to be the circle that's going to be in front. If I choose this circle to be in front, then I want to erase this overlap and this overlap. Let me see if I can actually do that with this eraser. Because I shouldn't have used my darkest lead to demonstrate this, but it works. So now it looks like this circle is in front of these two circles. And especially if I shade it in, now it definitely looks like it's in front of the other two. Now if I take those same three circles and overlap them slightly, and if I make this the one in front, so this part would be erased, and I could just shade this. Now it looks like this one is in front of these two. And I could do this too. And now the center circles behind the other two. Do you see how that works? So this is a really good exercise. Just draw three circles that overlap a little bit and decide which one you want to put in front. If I put this one in front now, then this part will be erased. 
and this will be the circle that I'm looking at. Shading actually kind of turns it into a sphere looking shape, but you can see what I'm doing. If I put, if I take away this part now, then it looks like this circle's in front of this circle, and this circle is in front of that circle. So just try this on your own. It's a lot of fun, and then try it with different things around the house, maybe tennis balls, apples, or marbles, and see what happens. Okay, so having shown you that part, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do a bunch of apples, and we're going to make them overlap, and we're going to do that on this nice piece of white paper. If you have some nice white drawing paper that you want to use, you can just uh, go ahead and work along with me. If you have a piece of notebook paper or some other piece of paper, that works too. That's absolutely fine. We just need something to draw on. And you can see that over here, I used a piece of inexpensive, it's not newsprint, but it's similar. It's an inexpensive sort of practice paper. I call this practice paper. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a nice piece of drawing paper. And like we did last week, I want to go ahead and make a border because maybe we'll want to hang this piece of artwork up. And remember we made the border. The border is this white piece here. And it actually makes a frame for our artwork. The artwork will sit in the middle and we'll have a white frame that goes around the outside. And so the easiest way to make a border is to take, I'm going to go ahead and use my 2B pencil for the border. I'm going to make a dot in each corner of my paper. And it's about half an inch from the top of the paper and about half an inch from the side. Half an inch from the top of the paper, half an inch from the side. I'm going to turn my paper, and I'm going to do the same thing in the other two corners. And as I was explaining last week, for me, it's easier to draw straight lines on the diagonal. It's easier for me to draw this line than it is for me to draw this line or this line. In fact, this one is really hard for me to do straight without a ruler. So I turn my paper at a diagonal. And you don't need a ruler for this. What you're going to do now is just join those two dots. So we're going to start here. We're going to work along this edge. You don't need a ruler. It does not have to be perfect. I missed that dot, but that's okay. No problem, I don't need to erase that. The reason you put the dots there is because it gives your brain, that your brain and your hand talk a lot while you're drawing. It gives your brain something to aim for. Your brain controls your hand, and it says you want that line to end up somewhere around this dot. Okay, so there's an approximate border around this piece of paper. And now I'm going to think about the circles. And here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've drawn seven apples, and I drew them all from the same three. These are my model apples, but there's no reason to draw this one just like this. Perhaps I draw it this way, and then I'll turn it upside down and draw it again somewhere else on the paper. Or perhaps I'll even turn it this way if I wanted, right? So you can draw the same thing multiple different ways. And you could use one piece of fruit and make seven different variations of that one piece of fruit if you wanted. 
but I've got three here that I'm going to be using. And the first thing we're going to do is put seven circles on our paper. Um, if you want to do less than that, you could try three. You probably don't want to do too many more than seven because that'll take you quite a long time. But I'm going to go ahead and do seven. And like I showed you before, my 7H pencil will give a very, very light line. And you won't be able to see it with my camera. So I'm going to be using the 1H, which isn't quite as light as my 7H, but hopefully you'll be able to see that. I'm just going to test it out here. Can I see it? That line I make in the border? Not really. So I'm going to use my 2B pencil for the light lines. I know you can see this one. And I'm going to do seven circles that overlap. And they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to trace anything. Just be loose and you don't have to be perfect. Let me show you how we do circles in my class. We go around and around and around until it feels right. And then you can just go ahead and choose the center of those lines as your circle. So do you see how a circle can come out of this very, very loose drawing like this? You can just find the circle in there and bring it out. So this is a much better way to draw than trying to draw the perfect circle, you know, and then having to stop and erase because it doesn't look right, and then trying again, and it still doesn't look right. Okay, this takes a lot of time, and it's frustrating, whereas if you just go round and round and round until it feels and looks right, then you can just pull that circle right out of all those lines. It's much easier, faster, and less frustrating. So let's try that. In general, I don't let students use erasers, but today we are going to use them because we need to take away some of those overlapping parts. And I'll show you what I mean as we get to that part. So we're going to do three, four, five, six, or seven circles. Okay, try at least three. And we're going to overlap them at least once. Sometimes we might overlap them more than once. I'm going to start, I'm going to do something similar to this one here. So I have one circle here. I'm going to go round and round and round. And then that circle is going to overlap a circle that's about here. And then this circle is going to overlap another circle that's going to be about here. And then this circle is also going to overlap a circle that's going to be about here. I'll make this one a little bit bigger. And now this circle is going to overlap Another biggish circle, I'll put that one here. And this circle is going to overlap a little circle. You know, sometimes when you grow apples on the tree, they're not all ripe at the same time, right? They're not all the same size. Sometimes you get these nice little ones too. And they're, you wouldn't want to eat them because they're not ripe yet but they do show you that there's a lot of variety in the sizes of the fruit. Now I'm going to put one more biggish one right in the front here. Let's put it about here. I'm going to move it over slightly. Okay, so you see how I'm just moving around because I don't have anything drawn really dark yet. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven overlapping circles. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the front circle 
and I'm going to draw it darker with the same pencil. And I'm just going to take away the overlap and I'll tidy up the rest of it too. I'm not being perfect, I'm just gently taking away some of those extra lines. Now I've got this circle as the next one. This is the one, this is the first circle we drew. This one's behind it. You can see it's right here, this apple here. So to make it look like it's behind this apple, I'm going to start my circle where the where it's um is crossing over wait. so this this circle is now going to look like it's behind the front circle right so this apple is in front of this one this is behind so you won't see this overlap we just took that away so now I'm going to take away the overlap from that circle. Now we've got the small one behind and we're just going to draw that, the part that's sticking out behind this one. Now as we move upwards and backwards towards these other circles, this one is now behind this circle because we've erased this overlap. So we're just going to continue this circle will darken it. It's going to stop right here because that's the overlap that we just erased. And we'll bring it around here and it's going to stop right here because we've erased that overlap. And now we're going to tidy up this circle just a bit. We're going to erase the overlap. And now it looks like this circle is behind this circle, but it looks like it's also in front of this circle. Now we're going to go to this circle that it's in front of, and we're going to continue the circle. But we stop here because we've erased that overlap. So now we have this. This is the part that's showing. And we're going to tidy it up and we're going to erase this overlap and the second overlap. We have two other circles that we're working with that are behind this circle. So if we erase this part and we erase this part, now it looks like this circle is in front of this circle and it's also in front of this circle. Now we're going to finish up with these two circles. We start behind the circle because we erased the overlap. We can put this one in. <clears throat> and then we can put the second one in. But we stop, <clears throat> we start here, we go around and we stop here because we've erased that overlap. Okay, so that's roughly what we're aiming for. Let's see what we have done. We started with seven circles that had some overlaps. And we took out this overlap, and now it looks like this circle is in front of this circle. This circle had two more overlaps. It overlapped with this circle, and it overlapped with this circle. But if we take away these two overlaps, now it looks like this circle is in front of these two circles. Now, if we look at this circle, we know it's behind this circle, but it's also in front of this circle because we took away that overlap. So it's in front of this one, and this one is in front of the last two circles. Now I'm going to take my dark pencil, and I'm just going to go 
around these circles again. All right, now I want to make these circles look a little bit more like apples. And I'm going to do that by adding some detail. When we look at the apples, one thing we see is the color, okay? And we're not going to worry about the color today because we're working with black pencil and gray pencil and white paper. So we're not going to go into the color like we did last week with the pattern peacocks. But what else can I tell you? Well, I can make this look more three-dimensional by adding some shading on one side. That's going to make it look like it's curving. And I can add a stem. These are all upside down at the moment, but I, if I turn them this way, this is the part where it attaches to the tree, right? And the stem is in, it goes, the uh, top of the apple goes downwards and the stem comes out and we can indicate that shape. I mean, you could just draw it on like this, but what it actually looks like, if you add a shape that goes down like this and back up and give it a little bit of shading, That's actually pretty deep. It goes way down like that. And then we can draw a little stem poking out. And we can just add a little bit of pencil like this. And we can add some of that um, texture. It's actually a little bit of an old apple so the skin is a little bit wrinkly. And the color, the red, is a little bit darker than the yellow. So we can add some of that detail just by very quickly sketching it with a dark pencil. And you can see how all of a sudden that circle looks a lot more like an apple. Now let's take a look at this one over here. Okay, again, if I wanted to have, I'm gonna turn it this way. And I'm just using these apples as models. I'm not actually drawing them exactly as they are. One thing I like to do is have variation in my drawings. So even if there were three apples that looked exactly the same, I still would draw them looking different, at least a little bit different between them. It's a lot more interesting to look at a drawing that has variation in the shapes and colors. So suddenly this circle looks a lot more like an apple, right? And if I continue to draw some darker areas where the red is, and I'll leave some of the yellow bits lighter. Suddenly it gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. Now this one's a funny shape and I've already drawn the circle round so I don't think I'll alter the shape but I might go ahead and put the stem in like this.
and maybe this one's going to be upside down. So let me turn these over and see which one has the most interesting. Okay, I like this one. I'm going to turn it so that it's facing this way. Let me try to draw something that looks like that. I can see sort of a zigzag line here in the top of this, and I'm just sort of trying to recreate that. It's darker in the center. And then I'll make some shading areas here around that shape. In general, if you have a round object and you color the edges darker than the center, it will start to look like it's curving. So if I take my circle and I shade the edges a lot more than the center, it'll start looking like a sphere. So I'm kind of doing that as I go. Now let's take a look at this big apple. I think I'll do this one upside down as well, and I'm, I'm gonna do something like, like this one here. So I see a, sort of a triangle shape, almost a diamond shape. So when I draw, I'm always thinking, what shape is that? And I'm trying to think of a shape that I know. So if it's a very complicated shape, I don't say, oh, that's the shape of a vase that goes in and out, in and out. I say that vase is made out of a sphere and a cylinder and an upside down triangle. And then I put those shapes together to get the shape that I'm looking for. Okay, let's go ahead and make this one right side up. It's gonna be a little apple, and I'm going to have the stem kind of sticking out like this, a little stem. Just making a, a darker area where that color is kind of green as opposed to the yellow, which will be lighter. Add some darker areas where it's red. Okay, I've got one left. What should we do with this one? I'm going to draw it like that so I see this part is down here. The stem is here. Now if you look at an apple, you'll notice that it's not straight across. It has these little ridges and where the ridges go down, the stem kind of comes up out of that hole there. And so if you can make the top of the apple look something like this, it'll look more like an apple than if you just draw it straight across. I'm going to add some shading where the apple is redder and also on the edges where I want it to look like it's turning the corner. And then I might just go ahead and this is pretty much finished. I just want to go ahead and add a little bit of dark areas in between the apples to kind of make them look like they're somewhat separate. 
but yet still in a, in a group. So down here, I can add another layer of dark. Do you see how that kind of separates the two apples? And yet they are together in a group. Here, they look like one apple, but if I just add a little bit of dark area here, they separate. So that's kind of a cool way to have them separate but together. And up here, this one, I can separate that a little bit too by adding some dark here. And then if I was going to go ahead and turn this into a piece of art that I would put on my wall, I might go ahead and add a tablecloth under these apples or at least some shadows to show that they're sitting down on something, a table or perhaps um, a dish or a platter. But we're not going to worry about that today. What I wanted you to learn today was how to make things look like they're in front and behind. And I hope you had a good chance to try that. Go ahead and keep practicing this. This is a lot of fun to do. And once you figure this out and it becomes second nature, you can do wonderful bowls of fruit or all sorts of fun things at that point. Always try to think, how can I draw something look like it's in front and something that looks like it's behind. And go ahead, and this is one place where you can use your eraser, because if you just draw the simple shapes first, you can decide which one's going to be in front, and then you can erase the line where they cross over, and the other one is going to be behind as soon as you do that. So you try that, and I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you have lots of apples and marbles and tennis balls to paint in the next or draw in the next few weeks. And make sure that you have colors on hand too because after you do the drawing, you can choose your favorite one and you can color them and hang it on the wall. So take care, enjoy your art, stay inside and stay safe, and I'll see you next week for another drawing class. Goodbye.